Just like before, when we started this topic, which conic section did we begin with? We, we started with the parabola. And the reason why is because it was a nice, easy case to think about, even though now that you know all of this stuff, you might think, oh, it's more logical to start with the circle, because that's like your basic case. But you can see it sort of breaks down mathematically because it doesn't have the ratio of the eccentricity that we're talking about. Okay? That's how we started with the parabola. I'm going to do the same thing for thinking about the different kinds of equations that it has. Okay? So, Cartesian equations. x squared equals 4ay. I'm sticking the a in there because it's important for when we have the parametric equations. You're going to get a pair of equations in terms of a parameter. Remember this? You'll have an x equals and a y equals. What were they? 2at and at squared. Good. And the critical thing about these was that if you put them together, if you sub one into the other, you'll get the Cartesian equation back. So these two are equivalent to this one. Right? Good. Now, we also know uh, parametric equations for another of the conic sections. You know it already. It's just that we didn't usually call it a parametric equation. Which one was it? It's the circle, isn't it? Now, we didn't usually call it a parametric equation. We usually called it something else. It had to do with angles. We'll get to it in a second. Let's just think about a basic one. Let's do, let's do the unit circle, and then we'll generalize in the next row. Okay? x squared plus y squared equals 1. It also has a pair of equations that define its x values and its y values. What were the coordinates? It was a trig thing, wasn't it? Now, it's, it's sine and cos, but which one's which? X is cos. X is cos, and the, the way I remember it is it's alphabetical, and that makes y sine. And of course, you could draw the unit circle for yourself, and you'll see cos refers to that horizontal distance, hence x, and sine refers to the vertical distance, hence y. Now, we actually gave it a different name. Do you remember what we called it? We didn't call it parametric equations. Because it has to do with this angle, we often called them um, polar coordinates because that defines things in terms of angle and radius. Okay? So we'll revisit that word in a second. Now, if that's what a circle is, we know an ellipse is... Oh, sorry. I skipped something. I need to generalize. That was the unit circle. Let's do a general circle. If all I change is I make the circle bigger, how are the <coughs> polar coordinates, the parametric equations, how are they going to change? Yeah. Um, well, they're going to get further out, further away from the origin by a factor of the radius, right? So that's going to be r cos theta, and this will be r sine theta. And that's the only difference. Okay, okay now I can move on to the ellipse. Now, being that an ellipse is just a circle that's been stretched out in different ways, Okay. If we consider the basic one, which has its center at the origin, oops, there we go. Okay. The nice thing about this equation is it's already got its proportions built into it based on A and B. Okay. <clears throat> Intuition kind of tells you, well, the cause and sine thing should still sort of be happening. Right? Because it's still going around and around in the same way. And these are the, they're also called circular functions, if you remember that. Okay? But they're not going to go around and around in this neat way, this equal way. Right? Sometimes you'll be further across than you are high, rather than exactly the same amount. Okay? So how do we account for that? Hmm. Well, how do we get r cos theta on our side? Why do we multiply by r? Why do we do that? Um, change the radius, right? We know that, for instance, if r was 5, 25, we're just going to be the same things but further away, okay? And how much further away was the radius? Now, a squared and b squared are how much further away you are horizontally or vertically, right? Because if I make this a really big number and this a small number, that makes you really fat or vice versa, okay? So therefore, instead of r cos theta, you're just going to have a cos theta. That's how far across you can go. Right? A is what defines how wide your ellipse will be. And in the same way, because Y is operating on a completely different system, based on how tall or squat we're making it, it will be sine theta. Right, now we have one last conic section that we've done today. Now, we sort of did some logic, and the proofs, <laughs> geometrically, are very, very simple for all of these. Okay? The hyperbola is not so neat. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, I will give you 
parametric equations. Okay? And we're just going to show that they work, but I'm not going to derive the actual results for you because they will take you forever and you won't gain that much out of it, really. It's just your head sort of spins with trig and it's confusing. Okay? So we're going to go like so. And I think from memory, this should be sec theta and y equals tan theta. Is that about right? Yeah, good. Okay. And you're like, hmm? where does that come from? And the answer is some wacko geometry. But let's just quickly make ourselves content that this works. And it's a very, very simple uh, trig identity that'll let us do it. Okay? What were you we saying at the beginning? The parametric equations, when you stick them together, you should get the Cartesian equation. Right? So, because I've got expressions for x and y, all I have to do is sub them in, and let's see what happens. Okay. So I'll take the left-hand side. I'm going to have, let's see, a squared sec squared and b squared tan squared. That's what I've got. So I know where I want to end, right? So there should be some funky cancelling out here, right? The a squareds and the b squareds cancel. That's nice. Now here you can see sec squared and tan squared. Clearly, there's the Pythagorean identity that's going to come into play. Now, I don't know about you, but I always found it a nightmare to try and remember. Is it 1 minus tan squared is sex or the other way around? I always found that confusing. Okay? So here's the way that I do it. Just go back to the original. Sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Right? Everyone remembers that. People don't seem to have trouble with that, which is great. Okay? How do you go from this one to the one with tans in it? What do we do to everything on that line? You divide by cos squared. Right? So divide that one, you get tan squared. Divide this one, you get 1. And then you have your reciprocal identity along the end. So that's a really nice foolproof way of never screwing it up. Okay? Uh, therefore, I'm going to stick that in there. So I get my tan squared plus 1 minus tan squared, which is the one that I was expecting. Thank goodness. Okay. So this works. It does actually satisfy the Cartesian equation. All right, as for the proof, you can look it up, but it's kind of long involved and I don't think it's that beneficial for you guys. Okay? But here's the point. You can use all of these to solve questions in a way that's a bit easier sometimes and maybe needs less, <coughs> less logic, if you like. So let me show you. Go back to one of those questions uh, where you had to prove that the distance from... I'll draw it for you. The distance from any point on the ellipse... Pick a point, okay? And draw the distance to the two foci. Do you remember this? Like, here's one fo focus, and there's the other one. So what do we call them? S and S dash. You had to prove this, right? What were they equal to? What was the sum equal to? We wanted to prove that they were equal to the major axis. And we did some sort of chopping and changing to do that, right? Uh, what do we use? We used the locus definition of the ellipse, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I have exact values for the x's and the y's, it's just algebra. Watch, okay? PS, where's S? What are its coordinates? It's the focus, where is it? It's AE, isn't it? Zero, okay? And correspondingly, this is minus AE, zero, okay? So therefore, I can just say, well, what is PS? What's it equal to? It's the square root of, well, this is just the distance formula, isn't it? I'm gonna go from, these coordinates, a cos theta, b sine theta, to these coordinates. I'll just do this case, and then the other one follows very easily. Okay. What's going to go underneath the square root? What have we got? I'll do a cos theta um, minus ae squared plus b sine theta minus because I'm on the or, on the um, on the axis, it's just zero, isn't it? Okay. Now you look at this, you've got square root of a squared cos squared 2a squared e cos theta, yes? a squared e squared b squared sine squared. Now you're like, for real? Look at that thing, that's a mess, okay? It's actually not that bad, think about it. You've got so many sine squares and cos squares, you're going to use this guy. Okay. You've got a's, e's, and b's squared, so you're going to use what's the relationship between a squareds and e squareds and b squareds, do you remember? Come on, we know it by now, don't we? b squared equals a squared for an ellipse. Which one? Minus b squared. Good. Now you can use that, 
right? In fact, once I expand it, you're like, oh, look, there's even an A squared E squared there. Okay. So I'm going to get you guys your first bit of homework is to finish proving this question using these identities. 